14th September 2017. Target of the troops was Namde Kanu, the man who has equal number of haters and well-wishers, the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP. After the raid on that fateful day of September last year, there was no trace of Namde Kanu. Then the man in question suddenly surfaced in Jerusalem, first the disappearing act like Houdini and then this sudden emergence. This is a story of a man who is wanted in Nigeria on treason charges. We cannot be economically viable if we are not politically viable. Right. And political viability means complete and absolute independence. Kanu was generally believed to have died over a year ago when troops involved in Operation Python Dance 2 had on September 14, 2017 stormed the palace of Eze, Israel Kanu. But the sudden emergence has added to the mystery which surrounds this separatist leader. So, who is Namdi Kanu? Terrorist? Human rights activist? National hero? A misunderstood visionary? Voice of Nigo? An opportunist come political nuisance? Born Namdi. Nwanekenyi Kanu, the metamorphosis of the phenomenon that has spiraled into the larger than life persona that is Namde Kanu, is that of a relatively unknown UK based Nigerian British whose ideals on the emancipation of the Igbo nation catapulted him into the national limelight. Namdi Kanu started off as a relatively unknown activist, leading a group known as the Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOP, and as a director of Radio Biafra, conducting his activities in the comfort of the diaspora. Igbos and indeed the rest of Nigerians looked on in silent mockery as Namdi Kanu, his fellow Biafran agitators, organized protest after protest in the diaspora. The demands of IPOP are quite simple and reminiscent of the ideals of its forerunner Odumego Juku. IPOP was born out of the presumed marginalization and unfair representation of the Igbos at the federal level. And IPOP demand that a number of states in southeastern Nigeria break away from Nigeria and form the independent nation of Biafra. Nigeria is indeed no stranger to Biafran agitation. It can be recalled that the Ojuku-led Biafran agitation culminated in the Civil War of 1967 to 1970 and resulted in Nigerian victory and an average of 2 million Biafran casualties. So, just how dangerous could a group internet protesters in the diaspora truly be? Nigerians asked. Well, Nigeria finally got an answer. The metamorphosis of IPOP and the Namdi Kanu from a laughable group of e Biafran agitators into being declared a militant terrorist organization by the Nigerian military began in October 2015, when Namdi Kanu made the decision to visit Nigeria and was allegedly arrested by the Department of State Security in Lagos. Namdi Kanu's arrest began a series of legal battles for the separationists. His incarceration, however, had an unprecedented ripple effect as he became sensationalized by the mass media and labeled him a tire come hero by the Igbo people who believed he was representing their interests and ordered to the late Ojuku, perhaps. Although Nambi Kano was eventually released from Kujay prison on bail by the Federal High Court in April 2017, an interesting by-product of Namdi Kanu's incarceration was the resurrection of a powerful Nigerian-based IPOP movement, primarily based in the Southeast. Kanu left Kujay Prison, a national phenomenon and celebrity of, of some sort, organizing rallies, granting interviews, making demands of the government 
creating a Biafran army and spearheading the creation of a climate of fear of yet another civil war around the nation. Amidst allegations of using the Biafran struggle to acquire wealth and fame, strong comparisons to the Boko Haram terrorist sect, as well as strong allegations of secret affiliations with the government at the very peak of the struggle. Namdi Kano disappeared September 2017, leaving his teeming group of supporters to their own fate. Mm. Lord Biafra, the prophet of time, and now Ramadike Biafra. Much to the dismay of the federal government, who must have been relieved at Kano's disappearance and were content to reduce his story and indeed the whole hip hop movement to a mere page in the Nigerian history books. On the 20th of October 2018, nearly one year later, Namde Kano resurfaced in Jerusalem. Is Kano's re-emergence in Jerusalem a coincidence or an odd to the fleeting popular folktale of Oluada Ekwano, a popular Christian educated slave who remarked that the Igbo people originated from Israel and are essentially Jewish? Now the Kano's reappearance on the scene barely four months to the 2019 general elections have been described by many as a strategic message to the Nigerian government. God creates countries and nations mm -hmm. and not man. There are many ways that nations can emerge. It is always an organic process. We understand that. We respect that. What people, most commentators don't appreciate about Africa and which most Africans are a bit um, um, slightly uncomfortable with is that somebody coming from Europe and without regard for your culture, your traditions, your way of life, saying you, 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 you are now in one country and your name is yeah. Nigeria. Right. There is something unnatural about it. Yes. I said to the British government, if you had come, conquered my people, which is a natural human process, yeah. that is, is, is entirely natural. Right. If you had come, conquered our people, made us English, I can live with that. Yeah. But to come and hand over a children of God over to something completely alien. This same culture that we have in the north, which is an Islamic culture, tried to take us over many years ago and they failed. Mm. You now came and completed the cycle for them. Mm. There is something evil about it. Yeah. What does the resurrection of Namdi Kano mean for the IPOP movement and indeed the voting behavior of the South East in the 2019 elections? Is Kano influential enough to decide the political future of the South East? Nigerian sits with rapt attention. For Roots TV Inside Story, I am Ito Rimor, headed with Fred Idehai and Chooks Ukwatu.